Greetings fanboys and fangirls and fan people of all ages. Today we have another review for you of the Captain Nemo figure. This is of course a part of the Mezco 112 Collective Rumble Society line of figures. Now usually these kinds of characters in this lineup are original creations by Mez, but this time we have one of their few figures that's an adaptation of something else. This is Captain Nemo, the classic character from 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. But it's far more than just a figure. There's so much to go over here. I can't wait to look at every piece of this fascinating looking set. So let's go ahead and check it out. You do get a couple of extra items before we look at the figure itself. One of them is this really cool kind of little booklet almost. It almost reminds me of a little uh, video game manual, like the kind you would get with NES games. And I think this is just really really terrific we've seen them do comic books but this is something very different instead it's almost like a little guide a journal there's even all sorts of extra information about things that at the time nobody knew were extra products coming like the wave rider vehicle and the entire extra crew that it turned out was also a product that was coming out and then not only do you have explanations of the weapons but you even have some incredible comic book-esque artwork that they have done. And these are just a sight to behold. I mean, it's just spectacular. It does look to me like this is something we'll probably be expecting at some point, which is like a diving suit version of Captain Nemo. And at the back, we have an advertisement for the Slugfest store and how they were gonna be having all of the extra little items that I ordered a few days ago. So this is just a really, really cool little booklet. And I wish they would do this kind of thing more often because it's a full breakdown and explanation of everything you would need to know about the figure, even if you had no knowledge of the original source material. We get a 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea Nautilus. It's almost like a little scale model of the ship and especially the Mezco design of the ship. So we're just gonna slice that open with our Exacto and see what's inside. And you get this absolutely beautiful little scaled model bottom you get copyright information and apparently Captain Nemo got this right from China. He went to the Orient um, and grabbed this but it's so detailed and I think it's great that they were so confident in their beautiful design for the Nautilus here that they decided to immortalize it in plastic even though it's the kind of thing I don't think we could ever get like a full-sized version of for six inch scaled figures. It's still great to have a little plastic representation of it and if it wasn't for the title maybe it would almost be something cool that Captain Nemo would have on his desk on the ship. It's worth noting that I did not receive one of the little Metsit figures this time with this order. Might have been an error, but I'm curious to hear from you down below if you receive one. All right, let's look at this. This is the actual figure and what it's packaged in, and it's a giant lunchbox. And when I say giant, I mean it is really, really big. Like this is a big boy lunchbox right here, okay? You like your, you can actually fit a full adult meal in this box. I mean, it's very, very tall. It's very wide. There's cool art of the Nautilus on the side, more fish on the other side, and this beautiful comic book artwork of Captain Nemo fighting a sea monster. Let's open it up, and we have the figure tucked away. And here's Mezco's famous little note saying, don't you dare play with this figure. Don't you dare. We also have plenty of great directions about what to do with the figure and how to apply different accessories and different costume stuff. Figure definitely looks great all packaged up, but let's get them on out. All right, and here we have Captain Nemo out of the lunchbox. <laughs> and I have to say, first impressions are so, so strong with this figure. This is such an impressive visual. Just to look at this guy, it's unbelievable the amount of detail that Mezco has packed in. But instead of just talking about it, let's show it. First things first, you'll notice that I have him in his hat and his cloak. Now there's all sorts of little details to look at with these cool soft goods that he comes with. But I definitely wanted to show you these first and then kind of dress him down as we go. And uh, this is just really cool. There's a wire posing in practically every element of it from the kind of top coat area. And then down here, there's wire going through these areas and it's extremely flexible, yet it doesn't feel like there's a lot of danger of it separating or coming apart or anything like that. Uh, there's also some posability up here with the collar. However, his bandana string back there kind of keeps the bottom down and there's no way to remove that bandana tassel. So you're kind of limited with the collar a little bit, 
but you can still put it up and get some Dracula looking action, but it's a little much that way, I think. Soft goods, unless you keep them tamed down on a figure in this scale, have a habit of going a little crazy. So I definitely like to keep it more tame. From the back, it looks really nice as well. You can definitely tell that this is just more of a standard kind of woven fabric. It's not any kind of like velvety material or it's not any kind of like uh, pleather like we've seen on some of the Batman capes. It looks really regal, I think, on him. The hat, I think, does a good job of not appearing overscaled because it's just flexible enough to come down over his head enough to where it's not crazy looking. The clasp on the front is really nice. You can unclasp it right there, but it's kind of a pain to get clasped again, but it's really not that bad. Uh, the hat looks good except from the back where you start to see that if you really want to stretch it out i guess you could put over over the knot in the bandana tassel there but it might look a little weird let's go ahead and remove the hat and you can see that uh, it looks really nice just like this honestly i probably wouldn't use the hat much i think the cloak is a lot stronger just in terms of the visual than the hat and if you put the arms together you can have them totally do the batman thing and be completely wrapped up if you like especially if you put some different uh hand options on there it helps quite a bit i also really like the com the completely narcissistic uh n that he has on everything for captain nemo so that's really cool now to me the easiest thing with this cloak is just to pop the head off and take it off of that way and it just makes a lot more sense that way on the inside, you'll see that they did include some elastic bands. And uh, you can see in these photos where I use those briefly to see what that would be like. But I didn't find much benefit in using them. So I was perfectly happy not to. And it seemed to make it even more cumbersome to put the thing on by trying to thread the arms through there. So it's not really something I'll probably use that much. All right, and taking a look at Captain Nemo proper here, there's just so many cool things to check out with the figure. First off, I think it would be nice just to have a look at this completely awesome head sculpt. Now, he comes with two of them, and we'll be switching out for the other one soon enough. But for now, I just wanted to admire the absolute detail and craftsmanship that went into this fine specimen of a six-inch action figure head sculpt. It's hard to believe when you're looking at some of these Mezco sculpts, especially in the Rumble Society stuff, that it's just in a six inch scale and you're not looking at like a 12 inch hot toy scaled figure but this is truly impressive stuff especially and you've got to keep in mind that we have a close-up 4k image here of a six inch scaled action figure and even under that kind of scrutiny all of the details you can imagine are just fully accounted for not only that but if you look even things like the individual hairs and the eyebrows and the strands and the beard and just the texture of the bandana is just incredible. Even those little multicolored beads that are woven into the beard are just represented and painted in such detail. The earring has actually been threaded through the ear sculpt, and you can see you can move it right there. And it's done in an appropriately kind of metallic gold. The tassels on the bandana, although they're not soft goods, are sculpted with a lot of love. This isn't uh, flexible or anything back here. I don't think you can rotate it. I'm pretty sure that's just glued in, but it's fine. Here at the top of the head, you can see the part in the hair, but that pretty well does it for the head sculpt, and an impressive one it is. I especially like that it captures the Indian heritage of Captain Nemo. I think that's really cool, and I think it does a fine job of it. Moving on down, you can see that Nemo is wearing a really ornate vest. Uh, this is more of a hard plastic piece right here. It's not like this pleather that the rest of most of the outfit is made out of. Also, it's worth noting that I don't really think that this vest piece actually comes off. At least I don't see a way for it to be removed easily. There probably is some sort of method like here. You can see where there's almost a little a rivet right there where it's probably possible somehow to remove it. Uh, it's not something I really want to try, and it's not something they include any kind of details on how to do in an official capacity. So I'm just going to leave it be. Moving to the shoulders, you get this really impressive, actually stitched up kind of poofy shoulders, almost like a pirate shirt of some sort. And I think that's super awesome. Another really impressive part of this sculpt is this incredible bicep kind of band where you have this giant squid uh, it kind of sculpted into it and the tentacles wrap all the way around so i think that's truly impressive 
going on down, you can see that we actually have some of this like pleather right here. And it feels a lot more durable and uh, just a lot higher quality than previous uh, pleathers were in the early days of the Mezco 112 Collective figures. A lot of those uh, had a lot of different QC problems, especially like the old Daredevils. Sometimes those would kind of like rot and uh, peel. And I'm really hoping that's not the case with these because so much of the figures you can see with the pants is made out of that material. Only time will tell. I'm trying to be positive that maybe it won't do that. And this takes us to the really ornate belt section here where you've got things like seashells in there, all sorts of little buckles, even sort of a trident kind of clasp right there. It just goes on and on. And of course that detail continues all the way around to the back. Where we have his laden sparklock handgun right here. At least that's what the journal calls it. And it's in this really incredible holster with, once again, that terrific little narcissistic detail with the N right there. I think uh, he and Batman have been hanging out together, talking to the same branding people. This leads us to an incredible scabbard, uh, or sheath, whatever you want to call it, for this wonderful sword, which we'll be taking a look at later with some of the accessories. And even this kind of interchangeable uh, piece right here that can hold different accessories that we'll look at, including this awesome telescope. This is, of course, a little strap that goes around the thigh. And then you have these blue kind of pleathery pants. They're not just a very plain or anything like that. They actually have all sorts of little designs. And looking at the boots, these are so impressive. They look equally futuristic and retro-y for the 19th century. Uh, they have some awesome kind of golden details with the toes and some of the clasps and things. And of course, the hands are just expertly detailed with all sorts of little kind of designs woven into the gloves. Even the hands just have such intricate detail into them, and the gloves are just fantastic. This is the kind of thing you think that Mezco would be like, oh, we'll just find some hands and reuse them from another figure, but nope. There's also this really cool bracelet piece to where if you want to get rid of it, you could. You can just take it out when you remove the hands, but it looks really cool on there, so I like it. And then there's this bad boy. We know that Captain Nemo lost his hand because, we'll get more into this in accessories, so for his left hand, you can see that he has kind of a robotic piece all the way around, and uh, he has lots of different options. We have this one on here right now, but he has a robotic, or we could even say steam-powered, whatever you want to say, hand. Very steampunk kind of inspired stuff. It almost looks like uh, Thanos' Infinity Gauntlet in a way. It's probably just the gold and the mechanical nature of it but it's just so intricately detailed and every little piece is painted in such a way to where this really does put you in the mind of one of those super detailed 12 inch figures. Honestly, he's a lot more detailed than a lot of the uh, six scale 12 inch figures that I have owned in the past. Nemo has a ton of awesome accessories. Of course, we have already looked at the small kind of little scale model of the Nautilus and it's just really cool. And as you can see, it looks really great in scale as something that maybe he would have on his desk or like a little model of the ship that he's worked so hard to build. As noted earlier, the other cool accessory that he comes with, which is more like a display piece in the world of the figure, is his hand, which was apparently bitten off by a shark. Uh, he was able to, of course, kill the shark and then mount the jawbone and retrieve his skeletal hand. Of course, now he has the robotic one. He also comes with this really cool bone dagger. I would almost like to think that he carved this perhaps out of that shark that he killed to get his hand back. And this is just a beautiful piece with such intricate detail. It's truly remarkable looking. I especially like how they put a glossy hit over it uh, to make it look even more ornate. It could also be construed as maybe being made from ebony of some sort. One cool accessory for Captain Nemo is this incredible alternate head portrait, which I actually like even better than the standard solemn head. So let's go ahead and switch it out. Although I may sound like a broken record, I always feel like complimenting Mezco for making sure that their hands and heads are really easy to switch out. Usually I don't focus very much on hands at all, and I promise you I'm not going to bore you to death with a billion different ones here. But I definitely have to show you some of the cool, completely brand new sculpted robot hands that he includes. He even comes with things like a pointing hand so that, you know, you can have those kind of epic moments where he's commanding his crew. And we are getting his crew, which I have ordered. So I do think that's really cool to see. 
There's even an open version of two different varieties. There's completely relaxed and there's partially closed, maybe to hold a large accessory. These are just so impressive and I definitely felt like spotlighting these, especially the empty chamber on the top there. I think that's a really cool detail, almost as if he is having to load in some kind of power source to power the hydraulics. And of course, I'm not going to focus very much on these, but it is worth noting that these are newly sculpted alternative hands for his right hand as well. I'm really impressed by the flesh tone that they used. And since Captain Nemo is Indian, it is just really neat the kind of coloring that they got into the hands to make sure that it appeared accurate with his flesh tone on his face. So I really think that's nice. But by far the most impressive switch out accessory for his hand is this. According to the journal booklet, this is the Ahab appendage, and it's called that for obvious reasons. Uh, kind of a little homage there to Moby Dick. And uh, this is kind of like a giant harpoon that I imagine he would use uh, to take on some kind of giant sea creature. And what's great about it is that not only does it look cool, and it has all of this awesome sculpting of like a squid and different things all around it and all these little gears, but it's also functional to an extent. You can pull the harpoon out and this kind of works like a fishing rod in a way because you can see all the cord in there and just roll it back away from the blade. And as you roll, you can see you're getting more slack in the cord. And then all you have to do is pull. I'll give just a little more slack. Like I said, almost like a fishing rod of some sort. And then you can actually pull this out. Now you see I have a whole bunch more slack that I could definitely get just by rotating the sides here and giving myself some more and pulling. You could probably get to a point where you could just pull this and it would be, uh, it would probably unwind itself, but I don't want to be too rough on it in case I break the cord. But I thought that was a great feature. If you want to roll it back, all you have to do is roll it towards the harpoon and it's just like reeling in a fishing rod. and now the cord is back taut again. So I really think that's fantastic and I'm very impressed by it. Now this works just like any of the other hands. At first I thought I would have to take off this cuff around the wrist, but nope. It actually just plugs right in over it and you still get a little bit of that hinge and there's still lots of articulation there. So I think that this looks terrific. I'm definitely getting like 90s Aquaman vibes from this when Aquaman had the hook hand which also happened in the Justice League cartoon, so that kind of immortalized that concept. Um, but I just think it looks fantastic. Uh, this is as vicious as you can imagine, and you, you just can't beat it for some of the crazy posing that you want to do with this guy. There's so many other goodies to talk about with this guy. For one thing, in his giant sheath right here, which is removable, and it's attached to the side, you can take out this giant sword. In the journal booklet, this is referred to as his cutlass. Uh, it says that this was made from rare metals that he found in the sunken city of Atlantis. So it has just a great mythology to it. And of course, we can switch out this hand to make sure we have a sword holding hand. And voila, Captain Nemo is now ready for the sword fight of his life. And I especially love this kind of dry brushed on rough gold finish almost as if it's so old or it's made out of an ancient material that's still tough as all get out. And I especially just love how the red contrasts with his blue bodysuit, but also brings out the color of the bandana. Uh, this figure is just a work of art, especially in this smaller scale. It's amazing to see it all geared up like this, but we're not done. We even get a telescope. Now, it comes in its own holder down here, which is very easy to work with. And we'll get into some more about this little part down here in just a minute. But this is really nice. It has all sorts of little details carved into it. And not only that, with all of this cool detail, you can see that they have kind of a faux viewfinder right here, but you can even pull the thing out. Now, Mezco is no stranger to this. Popeye came with one as well, but this is completely different. There's all this detail etched into it. This is insane that this even happened. He even comes with hands that are appropriate for holding this thing. 
it just looks fantastic. And I love having it down here uh, in this hip holster that he's got because I think that it just looks great. It definitely reinforces the whole theming uh, about being, you know, a captain of the seas. But not only can you do this, you can actually remove this piece and you can take the pistol from the back and you can actually plug it into here. You can see that it has two holes right there to use. And I apparently had the gun turned around the wrong way, but here it is. And it looks fantastic as a sidearm right here. Um, I think that it also looks great hanging off the back, which is probably where I'll keep it, but it looks great this way too. However, let's go ahead and take a look at the gun itself. We should switch out to our trigger holding hand, to our trigger finger hand. And here is Nemo holding the laden spark lock. And I love all the little details on this gun, looking at it from the other side, all sorts of great stuff there as well. And I love seeing this configuration with the gun out here, and the big hook hand over here. I think it looks awesome. That's not the only option you get with this side mount. Another cool use for this little side mount here is to put in his knife. You can see it has the two connector holes right there. And voila, it holds in very securely. And just another cool option for you. I like this, but it's kind of slight to hold in like that. It's a little small, so I think I would probably like keeping in the telescope even more. That also means that it's possible to put this on the back as well, just like you can with the holster for the gun. And all you have to do is take that peg and put it back there. And it looks much more appropriate back there than it does on the side, I think. You can also just switch it out for a regular old pouch. So that attaches just the same way. And this is his default configuration that he comes with and it blends in seamlessly. As a matter of fact, when I first saw it, I had no idea this was removable. So it really does look nice that way as well. However, I'm definitely a big fan of having as many accessories stored on them at once as possible. So I'm probably going to keep his telescope on there as much as I possibly can. Another little cool accessory that he comes with is this neat little astrolabe here. So he can navigate his way through the seas. What's really impressive is it even has some little faux glass right there, just a little bit of transparent plastic. So I think that's mightily impressive. And it's great that he comes with an actual nautical navigation instrument from the time period. And of course he comes with a display stand. It says 20,000 leagues under the sea. Definitely reminds me of some of the old film adaptations and how the words looked on that. Uh, you can also see that you have this little foot peg that can be switched out for a flight cradle. And there ain't no 112 collective figure complete without this cool little bag. Of course, I love storing my accessories like this. I definitely don't like to put them all back in the box. It's very cumbersome. I think from day one with Captain Nemo, one of the biggest questions that we all had when it was first revealed was what's the articulation going to be like on this guy? Because we all noticed that there was so much of this pleather material everywhere. And sometimes that can really be a death knell to articulation. Well, let's go ahead and find out. So with the head, there's actually a pretty decent amount of range, particularly because you have all the long hair in the back and the big beard in the front. So I definitely think that it's still able to do quite a bit. And I think they were really careful to make sure that it stayed kind of elevated uh, from the neck because there's so much going on with the vest and everything and they wanted to give it a little bit more flexibility. On this alternate head, the hair is kind of more flailed out. So it's not quite as limited one way, but because of the way it's sculpted, even though you can turn it really well this way, it kind of stops that far this way, but that's about as much of a head turn you would need anyway. Going out of the shoulders, you can see that it can go in about this much and it can actually go out really decently. These big poofy sleeves here in the shoulders really do wonders for not inhibiting anything with this part of the arm. Uh, same thing for going forward. If you twist the fabric, I'm sure you can make it go a little bit higher even and keep twisting and keep working it up. So there's definitely not a lot of limits there. And like I said, just this extra room, not only does it look cool, but it kind of serves a little bit of a mechanical purpose as well. There's this big kind of band here over the bicep, but it doesn't limit things too badly, especially because I'm sure you could actually just remove this if you wanted to. You could just work it on down the arm. Uh, I don't want to remove it because I think it looks awesome. So that's about as far as it can go. You can get a solid 90 degrees there. 
at the elbow. I think it's a double elbow in there. Over here, you got the big straps going around the bottom part of his arm and it kind of inhibits it also. So once again, that's about 90 degrees. There is a swivel in there and the fabric doesn't limit it too much. So you can do all kinds of things with it. With all of the hands, there's a hinge in the wrist in there and there's also uh, plenty of ability to turn it. Moving on down, you can get a swivel here at the waist and it works really well. You can see they've left a little extra room in here to kind of allow it to kind of bend and flex. You can get a pretty good angle forward there with the back and a pretty good angle back. So I actually think that's pretty decent. You can even get a little bit of side to side as well. Moving on down, you can see that we do have a swivel at both of the thighs. This one is a little limited though because of this whole assembly. He can do a little bit of the splits, but I want you to see some. You don't want to put so much stress on these stitches here on the inseam that you're going to have him uh, do an unfortunate accident with his pants. So that's not what we're hoping for. Uh, as comfortable as I am is about this far. And honestly, I don't see Nemo as uh, doing like crazy gymnast splits all the time. So it's not really a problem. Um, I'm definitely going to look at the articulation a little differently on both of these legs because they're a little different with this whole assembly. Uh, I think all these belts are removable. I'm pretty sure you can just unclip it right here. But with every, I think it would be kind of difficult to take off. So with this leg, you can get about this much. That's not much, but it's the price you pay for having all these cool kind of hard plastic details. But over here, you can do a little bit better because there isn't anything inhibiting it much. So you can't quite get 90, but that's about as comfortable as I am with it. You can put up both legs and it kind of helps things out because it gives you more slack in the pants to work with. So it's just something to be aware of. It's something you're just going to have to work with and see what you're comfortable with. There are double knees on both and he can almost kick his own butt. Hey guys, Jared here. Although I didn't notice it at the time, I had some bad stitching on mine and it's only visible when the knee is flexed. But another possibility is the pleather tore as the stitches pulled at it when the knee flexed. This could be a prominent issue or it's just a one-off. Either way, I don't suggest flexing the knee all the way just in case. Mezco did arrange a replacement after I found out. I'm not sure if there's a, yep, there's a boot cut. <laughs> I finally freed it right there. And you know, you can do a little bit there. Now, this was a little bit of a disappointment here because yeah, there's some pretty decent ankle movement right through here, but it feels a little more inhibited than I hoped it would be. Uh, so it's not as free as you might like. I think they should have sacrificed a little bit of the sculpting here to have made it a little more flexible. So it's not the craziest ankle rocker, but it's pretty decent. Let's see what Nemo can do in terms of a wide stance. Can he be flat footed? Yeah. So that actually works out pretty well. Uh, that's probably about as wide as you would ever need him anyway. But then the worst part is that it can't go too deep forward. So you might be wanting him to do some one leg out kind of swashbuckling stuff, but eh, it's a little hard to navigate. And so you can, you can definitely work with it. Let's see what I can do here. You might get something like this, and I think that works pretty well. But just know that you're going to have to be a little creative. You might have to lean on that stand a little bit more than maybe you might hope. So what can I say about this guy? I mean, honestly, Captain Nemo here is one of my new favorite Mezco figures. It's just amazing to look at all the premium little details that are embedded into this figure, whether it's the incredible sculpt or the really intricate paint. I mean, this really feels like next level stuff. And I think for the price, you are getting a pretty good value. It's, I believe, I think it was 112 when they first put it up, but you're getting a full color like art booklet. You're getting all sorts of premium extra accessories and soft goods. You're getting a huge metal lunchbox. I definitely think that this earns being more than just like an $85, like more basic Mezco figure. And yes, it's in the six inch scale, but I'm telling you right now that you're not likely to find this kind of detail on a figure that's twice the scale. It's truly incredible stuff, and I am so, so, so happy that I grabbed this guy. Fun fact, actually, Mezco did a Captain Nemo figure years before, which has a lot of these same kind of design aesthetics in it. 
and uh, the figure's worth a lot of money now, especially because it has a huge, incredible, like, diorama that I wish I had. But I'm telling you, this is such a great way for them to honor their old action figure past from years and years ago. Same as they did with uh, the Hood's Vapor figure, also honoring their Hood's line. So I think we're starting to see Mez just kind of keep going in that direction of not only coming up with cool original things, but also honoring older things that they've done adapting maybe some public domain kind of things like the Jules Verne novel 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. It's just really incredible what they did with this guy. He is a knockout and will definitely be the captain of your Mesco display. I sure do want to thank everybody for watching the review today. Of course make sure to drop a like if you could and subscribe to the channel because we always have new videos coming out around the corner. And as always, God bless you and yours and I'll see you on Fanboys Forever. Fanboy out.